We call upon Brahma. We call upon Mahidhai. We call upon Yama. So long as they proceed in this way it's impossible that they will, when the body breaks up, after death, be reborn in the company of Brahma. Suppose the river Asiravati was full to the brim so a crow could drink from it. Then along comes a person who wants to cross over to the far shore. But while still on the near shore, their arms are tied tightly behind their back with a strong chain. What do you think, Vaisetha? Could that person cross over to the far shore? No, Master Gotama. In the same way, the five kinds of sensual stimulation are called chains and fetters in the training of the noble one. What five? Sights known by the eye that are likable, desirable, agreeable, pleasant, sensual, and arousing. Sounds known by the ear. Smells known by the nose. Tastes known by the tongue. Touches known by the body that are likable, desirable, agreeable, pleasant, sensual, and arousing. These are the five kinds of sensual stimulation that are called chains and fetters in the training of the noble one. The Brahmins proficient in the three Vedas enjoy these five kinds of sensual stimulation tied, infatuated, attached, blind to the drawbacks, and not understanding the escape. So long as they enjoy them it's impossible that they will, when the body breaks up, after death, be reborn in the company of Brahma. Suppose the river Asiravati was full to the brim so a crow could drink from it. Then along comes a person who wants to cross over to the far shore. But they'd lie down wrapped in cloth from head to foot. What do you think, Vaisetha? Could that person cross over to the far shore? No, Master Gotama. In the same way, the five hindrances are called obstacles and hindrances and coverings and shrouds in the training of the noble one. What five? The hindrances of sensual desire, ill will, dullness and drowsiness, restlessness and remorse, and doubt. These five hindrances are called obstacles and hindrances and coverings and shrouds in the training of the noble one. The Brahmins proficient in the three Vedas are hindered, obstructed, covered and shrouded by these five hindrances. So long as they are so obstructed it's impossible that they will, when the body breaks up, after death, be reborn in the company of Brahma. Three converging what do you think, Vaisetha? Have you heard that the Brahmins who are elderly and senior, the teachers of teachers, say whether Brahma is possessive or not? That he is not, Master Gotama. Is his heart full of enmity or not? It is not. Is his heart full of ill will or not? It is not. Is his heart corrupted or not? It is not. Does he wield power or not? He does. What do you think, Vaisetha? Are they Brahmins proficient in the three Vedas possessive or not? They are. Are their hearts full of enmity or not? They are. Are their hearts full of ill will or not? They are. Are their hearts corrupted or not? They are. Do they wield power or not? They do not. So it seems that the Brahmins proficient in the three Vedas are possessive, but Brahma is not. But would Brahmins who are possessive come together and converge with Brahma, who isn't possessive? No, Master Gotama. Good, Vaisetha. It's impossible that the Brahmins who are possessive will, when the body breaks up after death, be reborn in the company of Brahma, who isn't possessive. And it seems that the Brahmins have enmity, ill will, corruption, and do not wield power, while Brahma is the opposite in all these things. But would Brahmins who are opposite to Brahma in all things come together and converge with him? No, Master Gotama. Good, Vaisetha. It's impossible that such Brahmins will, when the body breaks up, after death, be reborn in the company of Brahma. But here the Brahmins proficient in the three Vedas sink down where they have sat, only to be torn apart, all the while imagining that they're crossing over to drier ground. That's why the three Vedas of the Brahmins are called a salted land and a barren land and a disaster. When he said this, Vaisetha said to the Buddha, I have heard, Master Gotama, that you know the path to company with Brahma. What do you think, Vaisetha? 
Is the village of Manasakata nearby? Yes it is. What do you think, Vaisetha? Suppose a person was born and raised in Manasakata. And as soon as they left the town some people asked them for the road to Manasakata. Would they be slow or hesitant to answer? No, Master Gotama. Why is that? Because they were born and raised in Manasakata. They're well acquainted with all the roads to the village. Still, it's possible they might be slow or hesitant to answer. But the realized one is never slow or hesitant when questioned about the Brahma realm or the practice that leads to the Brahma realm. I understand Brahma, the Brahma realm, and the practice that leads to the Brahma realm, practicing in accordance with which one is reborn in the Brahma realm. When he said this, Vaisetha said to the Buddha, I have heard, Master Gotama, that you teach the path to company with Brahma. Please teach us that path and elevate this generation of Brahmins. Well then, Vaisetha, listen and pay close attention, I will speak. Yes, sir, replied Vaisetha. For teaching the path to Brahma. The Buddha said this. It's when a realized one arises in the world, perfected, a fully awakened Buddha. That's how a mendicant is accomplished in ethics. Seeing that the hindrances have been given up in them, joy springs up. Being joyful, rapture springs up. When the mind is full of rapture, the body becomes tranquil. When the body is tranquil, they feel bliss. And when blissful, the mind becomes immersed. They meditate spreading a heart full of love to one direction, and to the second, and to the third, and to the fourth. In the same way above, below. Across, everywhere, all around, they spread a heart full of love to the whole world, abundant, expansive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. Suppose there was a powerful horn blower. They'd easily make themselves heard in the four directions. In the same way, when the heart's release by love has been developed and cultivated like this, any limited deeds they've done don't remain or persist there. This is a path to companionship with Brahma. Furthermore, a mendicant meditates spreading a heart full of compassion. They meditate spreading a heart full of rejoicing. They meditate spreading a heart full of equanimity to one direction, and to the second, and to the third, and to the fourth. In the same way above, below, across, everywhere, all around, they spread a heart full of equanimity to the whole world, abundant, expansive, limitless, free of enmity and ill will. Suppose there was a powerful horn blower. They'd easily make themselves heard in the four directions. In the same way, when the heart's release by equanimity has been developed and cultivated like this, any limited deeds they've done don't remain or persist there. This too is a path to companionship with Brahma. What do you think, Vaisetha? When a mendicant meditates like this, are they possessive or not? They are not. Is their heart full of enmity or not? It is not. Is their heart full of ill will or not? It is not. Is their heart corrupted or not? It is not. Do they wield power or not? They do. So it seems that that mendicant is not possessive, and neither is Brahma. Would a mendicant who is not possessive come together and converge with Brahma? who isn't possessive. Yes, Master Gotama. Good, Vaisetha. It's possible that a mendicant who is not possessive will, when the body breaks up, after death, be reborn in the company of Brahma, who isn't possessive. And it seems that that mendicant has no enmity, ill will, corruption, and does wield power, while Brahma is the same in all these things. Would a mendicant who is the same as Brahma in all things come together and converge with him. Yes, Master Gotama. Good, Vaisetha. It's possible that that mendicant will, when the body breaks up, after death, be reborn in the company of Brahma. When he had spoken, Vaisetha and Bharadvaha said to him, Excellent, Master Gotama. Excellent. As if he were writing the overturned, or revealing the hidden or pointing out the path to the lost, or lighting a lamp in the dark. 
so people with good eyes can see what's there, Master Gotama has made the teaching clear in many ways. We go for refuge to Master Gotama, to the teaching, and to the mendicant Sangha. From this day forth, may Master Gotama remember us as lay followers who have gone for refuge for life. NDN 03